everybody. Welcome back to Hi-Fi Home Theater. I'm Brian. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, as you know, or hopefully you know, I dropped my review of the Martin Logan Motion XT F200 speakers last week. And if you haven't checked that out, please do. I'll leave a link for it up in here or in here, wherever YouTube decides to place it. Uh, but shortly after I got the review, I started getting questions uh, about the speaker behind me, this little guy here, the MP10. And I actually get quite a few uh, questions about that speaker. So I figured, hey, I'm trying to get more uh, content out on a regular basis. So why not make a short video on it for you guys? So today we're going to go over what is the MP10? What is its use case? What is it designed for? Uh, how am I using it? Or them, I should say. Then we'll take a look at some specs and details. Then we'll head on down to the laptop and Arc Genesis and see how they measure in my room. I'll talk about their performance in my room and how they match up with the rest of my speakers. And then I'll give my final thoughts. All right, so the MP10, the Martin Logan Motion MP10, uh, and where the MP stands for multipurpose. This is a speaker that's designed as a solution for either a small surround speaker or possibly a, a height speaker or maybe even flanking a flat screen, maybe up above the fireplace, which is you know maybe for an alternative as a sound bar. That's what the speaker is designed for. A couple of things that make it a good option in this case is, for one, it's small and lightweight. It's uh, about five inches deep and weighs less than 10 pounds. And then the second reason is it has a couple of interesting mounting options. Just the way the cabinet is angled on the top side or the bottom side, however you want to look at it, and the, the bracket that Martin Logan has designed for the speaker, depending on how you mount the bracket, you can either mount this speaker one way or another. And if you need to uh, give it an angle, let's say put it maybe up in your front of your room, if you can't like put holes in your ceilings for ceiling speakers, this is a good alternative because it can go up into the corner of the ceiling and angle down towards the listening position, just depending on how you install the bracket. For me, I'm actually using these as my side and rear surrounds. So real interesting little speaker. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at some specs and details up close. All right, let's take a closer look at the MP10 and go over some of its specs. The dimensions for this all plastic cabinet are 14 inches tall, eight inches wide, and it's only five inches deep. The listed frequency response of the MP10 is 81 hertz to 25 kilohertz. The recommended power handling is 20 to 200 watts. The listed sensitivity is 92 dB. Impedance is 5 ohms. And as for the drivers in here, we'll start with this waveguide housing a folded motion tweeter that is 1 inch wide and 1.4 inches tall, which is uh, smaller than the XT tweeter that comes in at one and a quarter inches by 2.4 inches tall. So that's one of the biggest differences between the regular motion and the XT is the smaller AMT tweeter in the regular motion. The waveguide is also different on the regular motion than it is on the XT. Here we have a 90 by 90 degree dispersion pattern on this waveguide. Whereas on the XT, you have 90 uh, horizontal and a 45 vertical, if I'm not mistaken. One thing I will mention is this little Martin Logan emblem. This does not come attached in the package when you get this. Uh, you'll have to install this yourself based on what orientation you're using. So you can have this flipped uh, this way, the way I have it, or if you have it upside down, you have it flipped the other way. One thing is I'm not sure uh, of a good way to uninstall this should you choose to change the orientation of the speaker. Next we have the woofer. This is a five and a half inch uh, Kevlar woofer. This does not have the Nomex backing that the XT has and it's in a plastic basket as opposed to an aluminum basket in the XT. Crossover for this is also a little bit lower at 2100 kilohertz. Another thing to note is this is actually a ported speaker. Uh, this has what, the, what Martin Logan calls their stealth port. It kind of folds around inside of there. I'll put an uh, image up on the screen showing what it looks like, a, a side cutout view of that. And you can see this is actually under here is where the port exits on the back. 
while we're while we're back here we'll check out the binding posts they're a good design nice and uh curved just like i said on my f200 review be careful not to over tighten these which is easy to do because you can get a good real good grip on them then you have your little nubs here that attach to the wall mount itself that's how it attaches to the secures itself to the mount and to the wall or ceiling and then i have these rubber feet in here i can't remember if these came in the packaging or if i bought these myself but you really whatever you're going to attach these to the bracket and then either this end of the speaker or this end of the speaker is going to be in contact with your ceiling or wall or, or could be in contact with your ceiling or wall so i recommend putting something to uh keep the speaker itself from brushing up against your speaker or, or your ceiling or your wall final weight for this comes in at 9.7 pounds so it's very light very compact very light speaker and the available finishes are this gloss black with the uh, matte, with the, with the uh, flat colored front baffle. You get a walnut that has, I think, believe has the same baffle, just like a more gold ring around it. And then you get a satin white, which I believe also has a white baffle. So that's the details and up close look at the MP10. Altogether, although it is an all plastic construction, I don't see really how they would have uh, done this anyway else. And it, it is does feel like quality construction all around. One thing to note, going back to that port design, I'll show this cutout again. As you can see, this thing takes really tight bends and is very small. So one thing I noticed that when I'm running the room setup and it's sending test tone to the speaker, uh, you could hear what is, I can only describe as the loudest port turbulence, I, uh, audible port turbulence I've ever heard out of a speaker. So if you are pushing this thing with a lower crossover and pushing it too hard, you'll probably hear that port turbulence way before you'll hear the uh, woofer in distress. All right, now let's take a look at how these are measuring in my room, how I have them set up. If you take a look here, what we have is, if you're not familiar with it, this is Anthem Arc Genesis. And what we have here is this red line here. This is the averaged response in my room. I'm gonna show you how I have, this is actually my back left speaker, I'm going to show you this, the right surround, the left surround here. And then I'm gonna put up a picture of how I have these uh, mounted and why you can see why I need this speaker, the shallow depth is my side surrounds are mounted on columns that are like right up next to my couch. So I really need a shallow on wall speaker. There's uh, the steel pole is located kind of near the middle of these columns. So an in-wall wasn't going to do it for me. So this is a good solution for me. Here you can see the average response. This is over five points right around the main listening position. And it looks pretty flat overall. I do have this dip around 500 hertz, which is in all of my surrounds. So I'm not sure if that is a uh, room, uh, room issue or if that has to do with how I have these oriented. I'm not really sure. But... They measure pretty flat and they measure actually similar to the F200s. Up here, you'll, you'll see that there's a quite a big boost in the low end. And I think that's how they're trying to get their 81 Hertz response rate. Uh, this one falls a little bit short. My rear ones have a whole wall backing them up. So they get a little bit lower, but you can see that's why I have these crossed over at hundred Hertz. And that seems to work for me just fine. If I add my target curve here, you can get sort of a reference point to see how the rest of the response looks. The mid range is pretty, pretty even. And you can see there's a, another boost in the treble here, just like on the F200. But overall, pretty good response for such a small speaker. One of the biggest questions I get about the MP10 is how do they keep up with the rest of my system, especially at higher volumes? Uh, they have this little small five and a half inch deep cabinet, a little five inch, five and a half inch woofer. How could they possibly keep up with a speaker as big as the F200s? And I think it comes down to a couple things. One, I have a pretty high crossover at 100 hertz. And two, there's just not a whole lot of dynamic swings in surround content, especially for movies. Even this scene that I'm recording this is Ready Player One. This is the race scene. There's quite a bit of action going on in the surround channels, especially when Kong comes into the picture, uh, when the train hits. 
there's just a lot going on. And I, I had trouble even trying to film any movement out of the cone of the woofers. There's just not a lot going on below 100 hertz to push the speaker out of its comfort zone. So it holds up just fine. So my final thoughts on the Martin Logan Motion MP10 is I think it's a very good design by Martin Logan. Another, I think their whole Motion line is just very well designed. I think for its intended purpose, it works extremely well. If you're looking for a compact small speaker to go with the rest of your Martin Logan Motion series, this is a great performer. Now I will say this, as I said, for its intended purpose. So if you are not pressed for space, if you don't really need the space savings of such a small shallow cabinet, and especially if you want to cross over lower than 100 hertz, then I would probably recommend going with a bigger bookshelf speaker. But if you're like me and you really need that, that space savings, that compact design, you can use these knowing that they perform great. So I hope that helps all of you who had questions about the MP10. And like I said, for its intended purposes, it gets my recommendation. If you appreciate content like this, uh, where I try to give my unique perspective on things and not always uh, me too with the same exact gear and speaker everyone else is reviewing, then do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Please uh, also like and share. And until next time, I'll see you later.